Hello everyone, let's be honest, this dimensional rift is no easy task to complete. These bosses are pretty freaking hard. Even with the buffs inside the game, this definitely is a difficult task. But as we progress further in the game, we're going to be going through all four bosses, give you guides on each of them. Today, we're going to be going over Sorokin. Now, in the previous Dimensional Rift video, I mentioned there was only three bosses, which were Sorokin, Lefab, and Maxim. When you finally make it up to level 10, there is a fourth boss, which is Modan. And I guess this one is quite the pain, too. So it's always a good idea to know how this boss is going to attack. So let's go over the skills real quick. Recovery of Blood is going to add a healing over time buff for three turns and give a non-removable shield for two turns to two allies with the lowest HP. So right there, you can only imagine that your Benzo with removing the shields is not going to have too much luck on this one. The passive skill Dark Sphere is going to attack all the enemies in the front row and heal the ally with the lowest HP by 50% of the damage dealt. And that ally with the lowest HP will also be getting a Blessing of Protection. That's going to be the one where they can't take more than 35% of the damage. So if you had those one heavy hitters out there like my Kion that just one shots everybody, not going to be too successful with this. Fallen Will is going to be immune to crowd control and silence. This is pretty standard. Followed by the Power of Abyss, which is going to increase 5% of your attack every two rounds. We see these both inside the Abyss, so figure pretty standard for those. So the passive skill Awakening is going to remove the DOTs from all allies at the end of the turn. So figure Carmen, Benzel, Soul, even Ken out there with the bleed, these are all going to be pretty much useless. I don't want to say useless, but they're not going to be the best bet to go for inside the game. And the passive skill Magic Circle is going to be taking 15% more damage from magic attacks and 30% less damage from physical attacks. So that pretty much spells it out right there. A large amount of your heroes that you want want to have that staff class or that intelligence class. So things like your Dowel Kiss, even your Selena, your Ash out there, for example. Anything that's going to be a single target is going to be a huge deal on it. But like I said, we want to stay away from those DOTs. Then we have Fury, which is going to be gain 10 Fury every time you're attacked and 35 Fury every two rounds. Now, if you happen to grab the one that's remove all the allies energy there or all enemies energy, that will not remove their Fury. Just going to do their regular active skill, remove that bar. And then the last one we have is going to be this Dark Storm here and pretty certain that this is going to be exclusive to the Fury. So when that meter gets filled up, this will be the attack you'll see on the screen. It is still early inside this dimensional rift, so take this with a grain of salt, but I'm pretty certain this is how it is. This one will summon a Dark Storm attacking all of your heroes, and then it'll be applying a 25% attack buff to all the enemy heroes. So if you happen to see that buff out there that says remove all of enemies buffs, that might be a good one to hang on to once you see that fury meter filled up. Obviously, wait for them to pop the fury first and then cast it afterwards. As far as the healing over time one there, I did use a buff that reduced the enemy's healing by 80% or healing reduction. It didn't really show the symbol hanging on them over their head for like a debuff, but the numbers did show up showing an actual debuff to them. So that does work pretty well too. Now as far as what heroes to use and where to put them is really going to depend on what's your strongest, what's really you've been upgrading inside the game, and what's equipped the best. Now as far as the formation, it probably would be best to only have one hero up front because of that second ability that's going to attack all the heroes in the front and then heal an enemy. But that might not be the best case if you don't really have ones that are super strong. Let's face it, you're probably already at the one that's maxed out already for your level, so you're really struggling to get further. So in that situation, I'm currently throwing two of them up front just because it's the only way I can maintain without Rochelle dying out on me. But other than that, use your own judgment. You can always pause and retry and give another shot if you need to. So if you didn't copy that there, Rochelle is a good hero to go in with. Now as far as healers, Selena is a great go, especially if you have the engraving. Having that revive at any time is a huge plus, but we're not really taking any attacks or any debuffs on our heroes from Sorokin there. So even going in with an Adelia is not a bad deal either. As I said, Ash is a good hero to go in with this for being a magic damage and having a whole bunch of debuffs on the enemies, but not a lot of people are leveling it up, so unless you're sitting at a pretty decent star level for him, it might not be a good idea. But Delicus, on the other hand, is doing exceptional against this boss here, and if you have the engraving on it, it's only going to make it that much easier. Void and Lulu are still good options to go for it because, once again, their intelligence, really anything intelligence is going to perform pretty well for you inside this. But that doesn't mean just because physical heroes are going to be doing less damage, 
doesn't mean we shouldn't be even considering using them. Obviously, my Kion is pretty high stars. It's 19 stars on this one and is still hitting pretty decent for me. And the fact that this formation is going to allow Lila to hit two enemies in a row, I know I can do some halfway decent damage and I was able to just barely squeak by a win. And where I said Selena is great when I tried her, she just was dying way too quick for me, so I swapped her out for Almond, and that also seemed to help out, although he did die pretty early too. Given that I had a Fleda on the other team, I did try to grab the buffs that were the ally with the lowest HP would not take damage. I did try to keep the ones around which would remove all the enemy's energy when I saw it getting close to filled up or filled up. And allies attack first was another one that really saved me in the end. But just like Lilith worked for me, Sanders is also working for a lot of people too, so that seems to pair pretty well with Selena also. But really, a lot of this is knowing when to use the buffs. Don't go and purchase all the buffs and waste all your energy if you don't need to. You can save it onto the next round and really try to prepare that buff for the next round. Something as simple as removing all the energy from the enemies can be the difference of using it that round and losing the next one, or waiting that round and winning the next one. This one here was level seven, stage 10, so use at your own discretion. I'm sure as I get further into it and run into later ones, it's gonna be a little bit of a different tactic, but at least wanna make you guys aware of what you're going up against and hopefully give you some tips along the way. If you guys didn't get the new promo code yet, make sure you check out this video right here because we don't know how long it's gonna last for. Thanks for watching and remember, I pick my butt.